Hello everyone, today we're going to be going over how to create a flat file as a source and our target within data services. First thing we'll do is once you log into the designer, you can go over here to your local repository, select on the formats tab down here at the bottom, and you'll see right away you'll, you'll have a list of flat files, Hadoop, DTDs, XML. We're going to be creating a CSV file format. So I'm going to go ahead and open this up. Go ahead and right click. Let me go ahead and right click and say new. And right away you'll see that I have my GUI which will allow me to select the columns and files that, that I want. It's going to be a delimited file. You have a couple of options. You can be delimited, fixed width, SAP transport, or unstructured. I'm going to go ahead and say it's delimited because we're going to be using a CSV. I'm going to go ahead and name it. Um, you want to go ahead and name this off the bat first. After you click save and close, you cannot rename the actual file. You'll have to create a new one. I always put a, a trailing in of FF for flat file. That's just my naming conventions. And we're going to let you know whether or not it's adaptable, whether or not it's a custom transfer program. Do we want to skip error handling? It's going to be local, or it can be on the job server. I'm working on the job server, so I'm going to go ahead and select local. Just like a normal Windows browser, I'm going to go ahead and select my C drive or my D drive because that's where my flat file is actually located. And then I want to select the file that I'm going to be using. Today I'm going to be using the sales org file. I've already pre-created one that has a couple of records in there. Go ahead and say open. And the first thing that it asks me is, do I want to overwrite the current schema? I'm going to go ahead and select yes. The reason being is because, as you notice over here on the right, it went out and it depicted from the first 10 records what the data type was potentially for each one of these. And it also automatically created the fields for me. You'll also notice that it has a field name of field 1, 2, 3, or 4. And you'll also see the actual data inside the flat file. It, you can view it as you're building it. You also see that the first row has row headers as well. Later down in the configuration, I'll show, show you how to automatically name these files and get rid of that first row header. As, in terms of the delimiters, we have a comma out of the box, the semicolon, the tab. If something is pipe delimited, you can actually put your own delimiter in there. And once you click out of there, it will ask you to rename it again. We're going to go ahead and use comma, so I'm going to go ahead and say comma. It also, it just like building any other ETL tool, you, you have your row delimiter or your, or your row within the next string. It's going to be a new line to indicate that the end of the line has, has been received. You have your text delimiter. There are none in this particular one, but by default you have the, your double quotes or single quotes. And again, you can hand type anything that you want in there. Default format, just your escape characters, your null indicators. You have a default date time format. This is actually a date time over here, but the format isn't in the yyy.mm.dd, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it as is for this example purposes. Again, you have some of your out-of-the-box formats of what you can pre predefine. Now we get into the input-output. Go ahead, headers. Skip row header, yes or no actually do want to skip my row header and this is what I was referring to. Now it's going to pop it up for me. I want to overwrite the current schema so I don't have to handwrite all these columns in and you'll see right away the first row disappears and the first column is seen as what data what, what the field name was and you'll also notice that the data type has changed. Now again this is not an int. I'm going to go ahead and make this a var char. eight as you saw that it, it, it automatically picked it out or I could do a date time with the format expected which appears to be MMDD and four Ys. This also has error handling. What this error handling does is if it tries to read in a record and it's missing a column as you know sometimes whenever dealing with CSV files or any delimited file period sometimes they're built wrong or you don't get the expected number of columns. What this will do is this will actually go out, take that record, write it to its own error log, and now once the load is done, it doesn't stop your load. It, now you have an additional file that you can go look at, and, and it contains all the records that failed. We already know that none of these are, are, are going to error out, so I'm not going to fill this in, but that's what the error handling does on that side.
So I'm going to click Save and Close, and this will now have our flat file format over on your left-hand side, which I can now use as a source or target within any one of my data flows. Thank you for joining, and have fun.